thing is though with MVP, it's very deceptive in what he does. He come in with a lot of hype, then hype trains get derailed, don't they? I'd rather be punched with a four ounce glove than a bare knuckle. I have no doubt in my mind that most fighters are taking gear. But then one of my friends said to me, I could get you that money every week if you're willing to take the losses. Oh, I think I'd beat both of them. That's just me though. <laughs> Okay, my name is Dan Podmore, the World Heavyweight Bare Knuckle Champion and the Cruiserweight World Champion. And we're here today to watch some MMA guys fight bare knuckle. Yo, if you didn't know and have been living under Dana White's biceps, Fight Front is sponsored by Jocko Fuel. You get 10% off when using the code MMA on point and you get the ultimate natural energy boost with it. Stick around to the end of the video to find out more. Everybody knows who Chad Mendes is. Fames, until I actually watched this fight, I'd never heard of him. They're not gonna put someone in who's gonna cause a big upset, are they? So the level of opponent he's fought in there, that you know, that was just a, an easy, easy fight for him. Pro boxing's built on journeymen. Guys that have had like five wins and 30 losses. They build their fighters up on journeymen. You see all these guys say like Anthony Joshua and stuff like that. They fight older men. Their first few fights was like 13 old men. Easy fights. So without journeymen, you ain't got a sport really. I have no doubt in my mind that most fighters are taking gear. Mr. Doble, are you currently using steroids? Until they decide to start putting testing in for bare knuckle, it's going to be rife. It's still rife in MMA. Steroids are not going to make you a better fighter. The committee could probably make you recover faster, make you probably a little bit stronger. It's a steroid induced impotence. You've either got it in you or you haven't. You either take a punch or you can't. You can't train your chin. If you're all geared up and you think you can beat me, let's let's just put that, let's just put it out there and let's, tr let's have it out, let's try it, you know what I mean? So if there's anything that I could say that people don't understand, you know, people look at it as more of a, on the exterior of things, you know, a bit more brutal. In reality, I'd say it was more safer than pro boxing. With pro boxing, you can go through 12 rounds getting punched to the head with the glove, you know, which is probably causes more damage to the brain. With bare knuckle, it can be ended in one shot. I think it's been proven that it's more safe to be hit once with the bare knuckle rather than 12 rounds of punishment. This is a uh, Ben Rothwell versus Bobo Abanan. Bobo Abanan hasn't got any movement, and he's just stayed there and let Ben Rothwell, ben Rothwell hit him. One of them is going to land, you know, if, and if someone of that size, a punch that's going to come off him is going to going to hurt. Bobo hasn't done himself any favours there. If Ben fights someone with someone with a bit of movement, say like the likes of Alan Boucher, one of the best heavyweights in the BKFC at the minute, he would probably come a bit unstuck. The MMA guys, they come to kind of square on as well, and some punching. Sort of like that. I think the, the traditional boxer will win the fight. I'd rather be punched with a four ounce glove than a, than a bare knuckle. Chris Lieben and Quinton Henry. Sporting touch of hands and Henry exploding for it. Ooh. American bare knuckle, it's, it's just a scrap. English bare knuckle, it's more technical. Count with cross to left cheek. Guys like myself, you know what I mean? I'd like to work my way in, set up some shots. You don't want to stand in front of your opponent too long where he could actually get shots off on you. I'm more of a in and out sort of guy, in and out sort of style. We'll see who's been uh, do oh, all good, good shots. That's great oh. shot. These guys are just, you know, rolling the dice. They're going in there and they're, they're throwing. They're not even, you know, defending themselves. It's just, but they're both holding each other and they're just. This is a took a lot of fights, which I used to win. But then it come to the point where the phone stopped ringing and then I wasn't getting any fights. But then one of my friends said to me, he says, I could get you that money every week if you're willing to take the losses. But then there would be some guys where I was supposed to be fighting a 40 year old ex-pro, hasn't fought for 10 years and you get in there and you're fighting some 30 and 0 pro prospects, you know what I mean? So having said that, it's, you know, I never used to care who I used to fight. I just to turn up and I just fight. I agreed a bare knuckle fight with BKB on last minute. I went to Gillingham for on a, an unlicensed show, had a bit of a Scrap with the guy, caught a little nick on my eyebrow. I said to the ref, look, I'm gonna have to, look, I've got a bare knuckle fight next week, I'm gonna have to go down. So you're gonna have to call the fight off. And he didn't. So I had to take the matters into my own hands, dramatically threw myself down. But as I've done that, I broke my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Ostovich and Paige Van Zandt. With Paige Van Zandt, with this one, I think she's totally underestimated like the whole bare knuckle game. Yeah, I don't think you'll ever see her in a bare knuckle ring again. She may have come in, thought she was bigger than you know everybody else. You come in with a lot of hype, then hype trains get derailed, don't they? There was moments in that fight there where she was actually boxing quite well. You're gonna throw shots, then stand in front of someone with no head movement. You're gonna get hit. Hector Lombard versus Joe Riggs. Ooh. 
Yeah, that wasn't an eye poke. That was a, a genuine knuckle to the eye. I think Riggs could have capitalised a bit better on. You know, he almost dropped. Hector Lombard then, but he's a powerhouse as well, isn't he? That like Hector Lombard. So any any shots hit hit by that guy, it's going to hurt. Yeah, but I think that was a legal, definitely legal punch. I'd say it's, it's been very rare where I've been after, told after I've had to go down, but I've been told I've had to throw the fight. And that's on loads and loads and loads of shows. You know, there's all these little unlicensed shows are proper corrupt. If, if you're if you're an away fighter, you, you'll hardly get the decision against a, a home fighter. So you just have to play the game. But what I used to do, I say, if I was there to lose, I'd let him have two rounds, and then I'd kick the shit out of him for a round. You know, and say, look, I could have had you if, if, if I wanted to, sort of thing. So that's how I'd play. Artem Lobov versus Jason Knight. Ooh. Where's the card? <laughs> they let these fights go on a bit longer than they should, to be fair. So the state of their faces. Now, if that was like an English bare knuckle, I think the cuts would have probably stopped that fight a little bit earlier than that. If, you, if you've seen the damage of both of guys after that fight, yeah, it was uh, pretty horrific. Americans are more bloodthirsty. I think the English are more safety conscious. The Josh Burns fight was, a, you know, was at the point of my career where I thought, time to give it one last go. If I could beat this guy on a day's notice, a couple hours notice, what can I achieve if I actually put a 10-week camp in? From that day forward, you know, I started to train hard and I trained really hard. And to this day now, that I haven't, I haven't had lost a fight since. Wanted a bit of redirection, you know what I mean? After I won that Josh Burns fight, this is all I ever wanted. Now I've got it. I'm the fucking happiest man in the world. Mike Perry and MVP. I thought MVP should have won that fight there and then. They decided to do another round. You don't go into a, like a five round fight and then say in it a draw, then go, oh God, I've done second, we'll do one more round. I think they're just they're making that up as they go along, which then ultimately cost MVP the fight that did. Thing is though, with MVP, it's very deceptive in what he does. It's like the Cobra, they'll lure you in, then boom, and then he'll hit you. Gabriel Gonzaga versus Antonio Silva. Oh. I think Antonio Silva's took way too much damage throughout his MMA career. He's, he's got no chin. You're getting knocked out on the regular last time to call it a day. You've got to think about your own welfare. And like you said, he's, he's been KO'd a lot. I think I'd beat both of them, 100%. That's just me, though. <laughs> I want anyone, come and have a go if you think you can fucking take it. I'm Dan Podmore, and we've been reacting to MMA fighters taking part in bare knuckle. You can catch me fighting on the 21st of Jan over in Thailand against an Australian guy called Randall Raymond. If you fancy watching that, you can catch that on Fight TV and be in sports. I'm looking forward to fighting in Thailand. It'll be my first time over there. I'm expecting a good hard fight. I'm just, I'm ready to put another win on the record. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you head over to jockofuel.com, by the way. They're our OG partners. And yeah, you get 10% off when you use the code MMA on point. So use it, you sandwich.